This is the first in our series of lectures on section 4.3 involving onto and one-to-one -one functions. In this lecture, we're going to talk about onto functions and we'll give a few examples. So here's your working definition. Um, if a and b are two sets and we have a function f from a into b, then we say that f is onto. We can also refer to it as a surjection or we can say that it is surjective, provided it satisfies this condition. For every y in the codomain b, there exists an x in the domain a such that y is equal to f of x. So every element of the codomain b arises as f of something in a. So that's really exactly the same thing as saying that the range of f, the range of this function, is all of the codomain b. Okay, so here's an example to illustrate, uh, to practice on this definition. Suppose we define the function f from r to r by x maps to 2x plus 3, then write a formal proof that f is a surjection. At the top of the page I've written out for you the working definition of what it means to say that f is a surjection. So put your video on pause and see if you can write a proof of this um, this assertion here and you just do it by reading from left to right and proving that this holds uh, for this particular example. When you come back you can have a look at my solution. So here's my proof. Um, so reading from left to right, you have to start by giving yourself a y in R in this case. So let y be an element of R. And now you have to explain how to choose the x so that f of x is equal to that particular y. So the way you do it is you call this thing y and you solve for x in terms of y. If y were equal to 2x plus 3, then that's the same as saying that x is equal to y minus 3 divided by 2. So that tells you how you're going to choose this x. You say choose x to be y minus 3 divided by 2. Then you have to verify that it's an element of your set A. So you have to verify that it's a real number. So that's obvious. So I just observe it. Then x is an element of R. And I have to verify that this happens. So we calculate what is f of that particular x? f of x is f of this quantity, and f of this quantity is 2 times that quantity plus 3, and if you see, you cancel off the 2's, you get y minus 3 plus 3, you get back y, and that proves that f is a surjection. We've proved that um, f of this x that I selected in the second step is really equal to the y that I was given in the first step. Here's another example for you. We'll define f from Cartesian product of z cross z into z, and it maps each x y to x times y. Write a proof that f is a surjection. So once again, put your video on pause and follow through this definition here. See if you can prove that it's true. So here's my proof. I start by giving myself something in here. So I say let z be an element of z. Then I have to figure out how to choose something in here so that f of it is equal to the thing that I gave myself there. And the choice is sort of obvious. Um, z com Relative to this z here, z comma 1 is really an element of z cross z. And if you take f of it, you get z times 1, which is z. So I have verified that I was able to choose an element of my domain such that f of it was equal to the given z, and that proves that f is a surjection. Here's another example. I want you to consider the function f from r to r given by x maps to x squared. Prove that it's not on 2. So that means prove that the negation of this statement here is in fact true. 
for this particular function. So, taking the negation of this, it says there exists a y in R such that for every x in R, y is not equal to f of x. In other words, y is not equal to x squared. So you have to prove that there exists a real number y such that no matter what real number x you pick, x squared is not equal to y. So think about how you might do that. Um, you have to figure out how to choose a y right at the outset, and that y has to work simultaneously for every x that you choose. Which value of y do you think would work here? Well, the idea here is that when you calculate an x squared, no matter what it is, you're always going to get a number that's at least zero. And so it will be impossible for that to be anything negative. So any negative value of y should work. So now you should be ready to put your video on pause and see if you can write up the proof. Here's my proof. I choose y to be minus 1. I could have taken anything negative. So I'm just verifying this. I choose y to be minus 1, I give myself an x, and then I just have to verify that this happens. So I say since x squared is bigger than or equal to 0, it follows that it can't be negative, so it can't be minus 1, and therefore f is not on 2. And that completes the proof.